Hello again from the Farmer on the Wall. These are hard drives that have lottery tickets on them. Each hard drive's got uh, two to three hundred plots on them. Each plot has got a whole ton of lottery tickets in it. And every time a lottery ticket wins, you get paid. Uh, used to be two chia, but they've not since had a halving. Now it's one chia. And of that one chia that I win, since I'm pooling, I got to share some of it with everybody else in the pool. But I still get paid about one chia a week out of these two setups. These are uh, this is a total two petabyte effective farmer. I've got about 800. This one's about 700 raw space, 800 effective because it's C7 compressed using a different compression. This uses a Giga Horse Chia Farmer. And then over here on the left, we have the Blade Bit Standard C5 compression, which gives me a little less. It's about 25% savings. So each raw is about 800 uh, terabyte, and I got one petabyte effective space. So between the two of them, I'm still getting one Chia, still more than paying for the electricity. And then from the previous payouts and everything, it's more than paid off the hardware. So these are just kind of sitting here, but now that we recap what Chia is, I just wanted to go over that I've purchased a infrared camera, which is pretty neat to see the heat sink coming off of these things. And surprisingly, a lot of these hard drives don't actually uh, emit heat the same way. I, I'm not entirely sure why. I think some of the actuators, the actuator is what runs the um, heads along the drive to read and write. And I think the actuators either aren't as uh, heat producing as the motors, which would make sense or they just cheaped out and the cover doesn't uh, dissipate heat quite as well as other ones. So you'll see here in a minute, I'm gonna switch over to the infrared, but uh, I just wanted to go over the basics of what Chia is. Yes, I'm still farming. I've cut back on the compressed stuff. They now have something called Dr. Plotter. Um, when it, Chia first started, it was 100 gigabytes per plot. Now they reduce it down to about 80 gigs for this one and about 70 gigs for the one on the right here, the more compressed one. But uh, no SSD I was playing around with last time had it down to 50 gig plots. And then now there's a new thing called Dr. Plotter, which is down to 25 gig plots. Uh, the downside of that is you have to pay for a very expensive GPU, and you're more or less doing proof of work more than proof of space at that point. So I decided to uh, get out of that game because I'm not going to pay for 40, 70 GPUs, ridiculous prices and everything. Still sitting at, um, I do have a small 1050 or 1030 still running on this one here just so I can compress, and then I've got my integrated GPUs doing the other one. So not much has changed hardware-wise, but uh, I did get out of the compression game. So without any more yapping, let's get over to the infrared. We're going to start over here. Done a couple scans so far, so we'll do the infrared switch. And now you can see the magic of infrared. And you can already tell some of these drives, if I get a little closer here, the uh, corner is not emitting any heat at all. And actually, the drives here are the... Um, they're all Exos drives. They're just different states of refurbishment, but you can see here, you can clearly see where the actuators are just big magnets. They don't really produce a lot of heat. But then we come over here, these, all these drives are fully saturated in heat. So my best guess is there's either something different in the design going on here, or they just have a totally different case that probably dissipates heat better. Either way, it's pretty cool to see uh, how hot these drives get. If you see, I move over to the space here a little bit, it's getting about 100 and which uh, pairs up with the 40 degrees that I have on my uh, status page. So about 100 degrees puts out some heat. Another reason I really don't want to do a lot of compress because I already got plenty of heat coming off just these drives. Move over this way, you can see there's not a lot of heat coming out of the power supply, which makes sense because it's got a fan on it to cool things off. Um, you can see the SSD has hardly any heat at all. That's down in the middle here. And then on the top, we can again get that comparison between the uh, actuators that have no heat whatsoever, if I can get the temperature on here, um, you're looking at the, the difference between, that's about 87 versus the hot spot is 113. So there's quite a temperature range just on that same surface of the hard drive. We'll get down here, the CPU again has that nice cooling fan, so that stays pretty cool. Get over to the heat sinks of the SATA controllers, that's where we are right now. These are the SATA controller heat sinks. You can see that um, those get they don't have any active cooling on them. It's all passive cooling. So those get up to 117. They're actually hotter than the hard drives, which makes sense. Very interesting, the memory is not doing a whole lot, so that's not hot at all. Uh, but you do have the chipset cooler. That's pretty hot. And then you've got uh, the heat sinks from all these SATA uh, controllers, or the big, uh, big heat producers on the motherboard. Back out, here is a Barracuda, which I guess is not efficient at cooling at all. 
just got a big heat sink in the middle for 105 and then just below it is a, a 90 so that is one of the strangest looking drives I have in terms of thermal output the rest of these you can see we're back to that weird actuator no heat and then the rest uh, does have heat and at this point I'm fairly confident that a lot of that is just the fact that the cover is either a different material or they just cheaped out and didn't make it all aluminum across the top not 100% sure though if anybody knows for sure that'd be interesting to find out this is all new to me I think it's cool just to look at how these uh, that's another heat sink by the way that white spot there that's my uh, remote uh, SATA controller we'll see how hot that one's getting 109 100 and not a whole lot hotter than the hard drives but still pretty hot back out here <clears throat> so that is the I, I wouldn't imagine there'd be much temperature difference between the blade bit compress and the giga horse compress but we'll find out this one is the c5 blade bit compressed um, and again it's weird just to see these hard drives are not that different I'll actually flip over to video here for you can see what you're looking at and here is the visual of these drives you can see right there they've got a little uh, that might even be the motor I don't think that's the motor I don't know what that circle is but um, I would assume it's the actuator it's just a big old magnet moves the um, arm back and forth to read you can see this um, this is a refurb and I believe these were all refurbed it's got to be the cover you can see here that might just not be even metal and then here they made it all metal so I believe they just went all metal for this one and this one that just didn't metal around that side so I think what we're seeing is just metal I'll flip back to infrared here here's the uh, visual again for an overview you see all that stuff we hit on over here with the CPU and stuff and then we switch over to infrared and you can see that same thing where the Barracuda is just weird it has like one little piece of metal and when you look at it from the uh, visual you'll see it doesn't look anything like that. It looks like a big piece of metal, but I guess all the heat is just concentrated in that one area. It's an odd drive. That's only eight terabyte, so maybe because it's uh, less capacity, it's got less platters, less uh, heads moving around. Maybe it just generates less heat, but 102 versus uh, the Exos over here is 100 and so. Yeah, it's a little bit hotter. I don't know, your guess is as good as mine. I'm gonna take some pictures uh, so we can compare back and forth as well, but if I zoom out here, we'll see this is just weird looking to see all these drives it's another reason I don't want to be too compressed because this already generates a lot of heat I'm coming up on summer this is more than enough heat to deal with um, and since I'm only getting paid one Chia it's really not worth it to have a ton of um, high-end GPU spewing out heat on top of all this here over here's the uh, Giga Horse compressed this uh, infrared camera is having a tough time keeping out it's just too much heat that again you can see in the middle is another heat sink from a SATA controller I, I gotta put one SATA controller here to reach out these other drives because SATA cables are limited to I think uh, two meters is their limit so I'm maxing those out really need to see how this metal, it's got to be the metal case that's just making that difference not a lot of uh, temperature on the wires of course all just the heat dissipation and then the PSU and the CPU fan, those are both keeping everything cool, so no heat build up there. This one actually is an NVMe drive in the middle. I'm surprised it's putting out as much heat as it is. It's not really doing a lot. And then if we roll over here, we should see the heat sink from that SATA controller, which surprisingly is not putting out a lot. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's a pretty hot uh, heat sink there. And here we go. Definitely not as, uh, you definitely can't see any of this. It's pretty cool how it looks all innocent and pure when you switch over to the infrared and you've got uh, all that heat pumping out. But no fans on them, so the heat just kind of sits there and then over time, you know, air just uh, dissipates it. This one's cool to look at this wall. Let's switch over to infrared here. And this one you can see again, and actually what's weird is these are all MDD drives, but it looks like this one was a refurb that didn't that had a full aluminum cover on it. And then, yeah, you can see this is the MDD surveillance. It's kind of cool how it puts a little bit in there. And then this one's the same thing over here. Or that's not the same, that's the NAS. They're all the same. They just slap different labels on them. But you got this one here with his heat dissipation. That corner must not be metal at all. And then right above it, same exact drive, just probably a different... Uh, parent drive before it was refurbished that one's got a full metal top to it and then if we move over here there's absolutely zero heat coming out of the USB hub because it's not really doing a lot of work 
little bit leak over from that one drive. And then come over to the corner, more of these weird drives. Wish I had more different drives now just for the different heat signatures. There's a really hot one. What's this one around? I think this is so hot because it's close to the motherboard. 103? It's actually not that bad. Ah, maybe this one over here. It's tough because the um, FLIR keeps changing the it's more temperature difference rather than total temperature output. Nothing from the switch, nothing from there. The only thing we have is heat sinks and hard drives. But it's still cool to see them all. So that is the video portion. I'm going to get some close-ups of the visual versus uh, thermal. Pretty neat to see. Um, very quiet. Still doesn't make any noise. Still making money. Still looks cool. So I'll keep on running it as long as Chia keeps uh, paying me for it. I think I made... It's pretty impressive, almost $8,000 with this all said and done over two years. So that more than paid for the initial cost of everything. And again, at one chi a week, as long as it stays up at 40, that's uh, more than paying the electric bill because I got about half this is running from solar. So see you in a bit with some uh, detailed photos. Here's some extra fun. This is the back of the GPU, my 1070 Ti, that is currently farming the remaining of my no SSD plots. And you can see this is hitting um, 111 or 17. That's with a fan blowing and cooling the chip, too. So here's the top of that same GPU. You see it hits about 150 on the where the chip, and this is on the back of the card, too. So the chip itself is probably a lot hotter, but 150 just on the back of the card. That's radiant heat, and then it's blowing out the back as well. So a lot more heat generated from these GPUs, which is why I said no thanks to the high compression. I'll wait till, uh, I think uh, Chia said they're launching a compression resistant, whatever that means. I'm sure it'll be a year or two before someone finds out a way to compress it. But uh, I'll stick with my uh, low heat.